Hello, David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. You know, there is a movement right now with Bond brands. There's a movement around creating a certain homage around their Bond products. A Bond brand comes out with an item. Very often it's screen use. It's from one of our favorite movies or maybe a movie to be. And they use one particular word to forward the brand. And that word is inspiration an inspiration to then create new items. And the brand we're talking about today has done just that. It's Barton Pereira. Now, the name should sound very familiar to you. We've done a series of unboxings and reviews, and one of the most popular ones was their Joes. Now, the Joe, if you take a look over here, was made probably famous already. It's amazing. The movie hasn't even come out and the Joe sunglasses from Barton Pereira are already famous because it is that image of Daniel Craig walking down the streets of London with the sunglasses on. I, I had the great fortune of being there, actually physically being there on set to watch him do that. And it was, there's only one word. It was iconic. So it stands to reason that Barton Pereira would use those Joes as a template to forward their inspiration around their sunglasses and come out with kind of a phase two line of these Joes, but with a twist. And we're going to be talking about those twists today. And you can probably see right over here, I've got them all lined up. They haven't even been taken out of their wrapping. We're going to be talking about the way they come, the way they look, the way they feel, the inspiration behind it, what they come with. We're going to leave no stone unturned. This Series 2 from Barton Pereira with the 007 collaboration is not just the Joe reimagined in new colors. No, 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 no. Patty, who's one of the co-owners of Barton Pereira, is all about traveling. Aren't we all? And this time, they took a look at key locations from the film No Time to Die and decided to really use that as the, the soul, the spring from which all of their designs came from. All right, all right, who's here to see sunglasses? Yeah, you are, I am, let's do this. So, and I haven't taken these out of their protective packaging, but the one that we're gonna start off with first is the one that was inspired by Port Antonio. Port Antonio, Jamaica where we see Bond in his retirement. You've seen the trailers. I don't think that's a spoiler. What's special about this for me is I just came back from that area uh, touring the different location sites of Port Antonio. Oh, uh, beauty like no other. The water, the beach, the people. I can absolutely see why Barton Pereira used this location as an inspiration. What's interesting is this has a safari polarized lens um, and the eye size is 52, temple is 148. Again, these are based off the Joe templates, so they're all going to be the same shape and design. And let's try these on. Now, this is great. They've got a lot of protective coatings, so you don't get any scratches on this, which is very nice. Uh, you've got this right here that goes over some of the details, but it also keeps everything well into place. Oh, these are very nice. Now I'm going to get up nice and close and personal and we'll get some good close-ups of these two because right now I'm just kind of holding it up to the camera, but you can see this in real time. Uh, these are different. And before I even read the stats on this and the coloring and things like that, what I'm noticing right away is the lightness and, and, and not just the lightness of color, right? This is almost like a champagne like color, but the lightness of the frame itself. And that's the great things about Barn Pereira. It's not going to weigh heavily on you. I, confession time, I have a very sensitive bridge, a very sensitive nostril, sensitive skin. David, I think you're a little sensitive, aren't you? Yeah. So uh, this, these lightweights are very good. So let's, let's put these on and look in the, uh, the mirror here. Here we go. All right. So the, again, very classic. We'll take a nice close look up here. And one of the things that we'll show right away is this is a very flattering design. The Joes in themselves, they're classic. They're a very classic look. And so they pretty much look good on whether you have an oval face, a diamond face, a squared face, uh, round face, it, it, it kind of transcends the shape. So it's, 
It's something for everyone. So what they did was they drew on the hues of the Port Antonio in Jamaica and the design, it, as I said, it's got this like champagne sand colored frame. It's got dark green polarized lenses, pretty much bringing up the white beaches, the lush green jungle of the area. It really takes on that atmosphere and that polished classic rectangular frame. It's designed in the US, handmade in Japan from a Japanese acetate and glass. Now, one of the things we talked about is um, subtlety or lack thereof. But in this particular case, you know, we always kind of get on about bond branding. When, when there's a giant bond label on you, it's, well, it takes our hidden invisible hobby and it makes it opaque. People can see it and we often don't like that. So the, the 007 on the arm is very subtle. You'd be hard pressed I think you can kind of see it there to even see it. And I think a lot of that is this champagne colored frame really adds to the fact that it is not overt. By the way, this frame, I have to tell you, when I first saw it online, when they made the announcement, I was like, nah, it's okay. But I'm really liking the lightness of color because it's so different. I have a lot of dark frames. I have a lot of tortoiseshell frames, but this is something that is different. It's very evocative of warm weather. It's very light. It doesn't uh, smack of, of a wintry feeling. It, it smacks of the, it smacks of Jamaica. It smacks of that kind of island feel of, of lightness and airiness, you know, one heart and, and love and all those things that you walk away with. So there is a lot of emotional connection to the marketing aspect of these particular ones. But you know what? We've got to get on a plane and head elsewhere. Can you hear that? That's the, uh, that's the, the beat of Cuba, Havana, Cuba to be exact, because we're heading to Havana for the next location, the next inspiration for these El Nidos still in its protective bag. We're going to take these out. Now it's interesting right away. We've got, um, again, polarized lens. It's kind of, uh, it's actually termed, uh, the lens as an old English polarized lens. You know, they look, uh, they look dark brown to me, but let's, let's give them a try on. That's what we're doing here. We're putting these on. Okay. So what's great about this is, you know, this, I think Barton Pereira caught it right. I mean, these do feel like they have a kind of a, a Havana Cuban flair, you know, that the Latino flair, it's uh, got this beautiful, I would say, um, almost like tortoiseshell. We'll get some close-ups here for you. Of course we will. Cause that's, that's kind of what you see. And only, only one arm, I'll turn this around, only one arm has the 007, which makes it very subtle. And when you have it on, it's hiding behind your ear. So those that were concerned about the branding uh, probably won't need to be concerned, especially with the lighter frames, but the darker frames, they do stand out a little bit more, you know, mea culpa, just to be uh, absolutely authentic. But these are very dark. I mean, these, these obviously, if I come up close, what's great is the light is going right through them. So they have a certain um, clear aspect to it. They're not all opaque. And, you know, they have like an uh, opulescence. That is absolutely the wrong word, David, but I'm going to keep it. And we need to hear some stats on these because there's more than meets the eye. Oh, so what Barton Pereira did here is they drew on the nighttime hues that you're going to see in the movie around Havana and the El Nido bar scene. We've seen a lot of images from that. We've seen even some trailer aspects to that. This design itself has what's called a deep ombre brown frame with dark brown polarized lenses. And again, this classic rectangular frame, the Joes, it's also designed in the U.S., handmade in Japan from that Japanese acetate and glass. The lightness of this, this, this signature lightweight feel, the sunglasses, is because it's, it's actually a resin-based polymer, plastic that's used. It's called xylenite, and it's tumbled for several days, and then it's hand-polished twice. Uh, it, what that does is it creates a very, very smooth surface. And it, I'll tell you what, it's super light, it's super durable and it's super glossy. So it stands out. So I'm kind of digging that. So I've got to tell you, my world is being kind of turned a little bit upside down. What I like about these sunglasses in particular is they, they, they match 
they match the Omega watch, that brown kind of hue to it, which uh, really does kind of give this a very vintage vibe. I'm thinking 1950s, 1970s Havana. Can you just imagine it? You know, just sitting there by, by the pool and by the water. But I've got to tell you, I'm, I, I thought I would be gravitating more towards the darker frames. I kind of like that light one. That light one really surprised me more than I expected, probably because it's so unique and so different. But I like these. I like the El Nidos. Love that name. Uh, because of the classic nature. So if I was going for something different, I might take the Port Antonios. If I wanted something and I said, you know, David, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. You know, I tuck my shirt in when I go to work. I might go for these, this, this far in at least, because they are a little bit more traditional, a little less avant-garde. But we got a next one to go to. So these next ones, I, I have a lot of heart for. Probably because just like Port Antonio, I've been to this place. And that makes it very special. I mean, even if you haven't been to the place, once you see it in the movie, this will be a, a very special place. It's Hakadal, Hakadal in Norway. Uh, Morten Steingrenson took Danielle and I on an amazing tour of Norway. Hakadal was one of the places because it is where we see that, that yellow cheese-like house. We don't know what's happening there. And even if we did, why spoil anything? But Hakadal was used to create these. The lens itself is called Noir, but the style is Hakadal. Hmm. Now, Hakadal, the scene is very snowy. It's very cold. It's, it's icy. It's a little scary. And again, don't know what's happened, but we've seen some imagery from there, and we know probably Safin is there with who knows else. But look right away. Let's, let's bring these up in close. I mean, this, first of all, look how clear that is. All right, that even that noir lens is, it's almost like a dark gray, but I'll read the specifics in a second. But look, look at the frame. I mean, it's near, it's almost like, it's like glass. It's, it's like ice, not snow, ice. So to me, this is really capturing that ugh, coldness of Hakadal. Of course, we were there during the warm weather when the mosquitoes were biting. Go in the winter, trust me. So here we go. We're going to put these on. Hey, now this has got a pretty... All right, this has got a more modernized aesthetic. It still has, again, those classic Joe frames, but take a look here as I slowly move across. You'll see my face. I'm gonna look like one of those like giant bobblehead puppies if I get up too close. So let me come back just a little bit so you could see what this might look like if you were walking around and talking to people and just, you know, having a, a cup of hot cocoa. Actually, they have, um, they have fish oil is what they have, and it's delicious every morning. I digress. This does feel and look like that cold, wintry type feeling. Uh, the lens itself also has that darkness to it. And we, we feel like there might be something dark happening there, although Norway's a very light and, and happy people. But the lens and the frames combined together captures that cold, snowy feeling that I think Fukunaga is going to transform once we see the movie. And, and as you can see, the lenses are very opaque, that noir, that, you know, which is night. It's basically night. It, it's got darkness. So, you know, you're not going to see that, that eyeball action through there. So if you're looking for that coolness, to me, this has a slightly more avant-garde modern feel than even the Port Antonio's. So that's something to consider when you're thinking about, I wonder which one I'm going to gravitate to. I have got a sneaking feeling that Morton might be gravitating to this, but let's read some specs. And just like the other sunglasses, Barton Pereira drew on certain hues and atmospheres of Hakadal. The design has a translucent blue frame with dark lenses, pretty much reminiscent of the icy cold Norwegian landscape. The classic rectangular frame is again the Joes, and it's got that same designed in USA, Japanese made type atmosphere that kind of brings it all together. So I like these, and I know many people are going to be gravitating to these. They're not probably in my top two right now. This is all about being frank and honest, but let's move on to the last pair. 
So it's, it's safe to say this last location that acted as inspiration for these sunglasses is on a bucket list. It's pretty damn high up the bucket list. It's Matera, Italy. We know the scenes, we know the environment. It's been in every trailer. I feel like Matera could be its own character in the film and, and certainly an environment to which anything can happen. Adventure, romance, excitement, and in this case, inspiration. So now we are looking at, still in its protective coating, the Matera sunglasses, Green smoke lens. Ooh, I'd like me a green lens. I do, I do, I do. In many of the sunglasses that I have, I don't know what it is. I like green. Maybe it harkens back to something, you know, very traditional, you know, very pilot-like, you know, that, that green lens that you're so familiar with. Oh, these are nice. Oh, these are different than I expected. Interesting. All right, here we go. We're going to put these on. You're not going to see a different shape, but look at, look at the lens here. Actually, before we even try them on, let's bring them up close. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick this up. I hope it does. We'll get some close-ups of this. But you should be seeing almost like a wood grain. I swear, that's exactly what it looks like. Whereas, you know, the other ones, for example, from El Nido, from Havana, had almost like a tortoise shell. This has almost like a wood grain type look to it. It's really unique. I mean, look at the side there. And again, that 007, it's really subtle. I mean, it almost blends in. I'm hard pressed to even pick it up on this camera. And this is a good camera uh, because it's, it's, it's almost embedded into this wood. I, 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 I there's no other way to describe it. It looks like these frames have been carved out of wood and then highly glossed. Now, of course, that's not the case, but that's what it looks like. So right away, those green lenses, if you can appreciate, I'll bring them up closer, do have a certain darkness to it. But the ocular acuity, as I look out to it, I like the green lens. Like everything is very sharp and clear and, you know, sun is, is, is filtered out appropriately. These are, after all, sunglasses. I don't know if you remember from the thumbnail, but uh, I like I like the look of these. I keep touching these just to make sure I'm crooked because I've done sunglass reviews where it's like that and it's, uh, it's not a good look for anyone. So here I'll stand to the side a little bit and yak to you. We're having drinks and this is Matera. So maybe a little bit of wine out on the veranda. And what's that? Oh my gosh, it's a DB5 and it's shooting up the place. Maybe I should get out of here. Now I like the place. Oh, the mayor. Hello, mayor. Give me the keys to the city. Why? That's so gracious of you. I don't know where I'm going with this, but this is, this is like a transport. You know, this feels like it would be Matera. Matera's got that kind of, you know, old world feel to it. To me, I'm getting kind of like a 1930s, 1940s, 50s vibe. So it's kind of earlier in time, not just about the hues of the location, but I'm getting that, that transportation that I find some of the best accessories and clothes do. They, they take you away from things. We've, we've been in, depending on when you watch this, we've been in a lockdown for some time. I don't know if you heard. But these are kind of transporting me there, and I'm really liking them. So let me tell you a little bit of stats on it, of course. So Matera, Italy, what a perfect place to take the most romantic and adventure-laden hues and tie that with a tortoiseshelled stone gray frame. Oh, they call it tortoiseshelled stone gray. Maybe it's the stone gray tortoise shelling that makes it look almost wood-like. And of course, the green lenses. Now this all echoes the colors of this ancient Italian hill type city, which is why we're getting that ancient, ancient feel that really, really plays very well with the senses. All right, I stand corrected. It's not wood. Uh, it's not a wood kind of type of thing. It is tortoiseshell, but what an interesting, unique tortoiseshell and ancient. I love that word because that's exactly what I think this is representative. It's it's a combination, just like Matera is, of ancient and modern intertwined together. And Barton Pereira knocked it out of the park with this. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to find my top two already, and, and you're probably sensing them as well. But we've got something else we've got to talk about, and that is it's not just about the sunglasses. So with the sunglasses, listen, you're going to be carrying these around, hopefully, Sooner than later, we'll be, we'll be traveling with these things and taking this with us. So in this other package that comes in the box, uh, 
And again, we haven't taken this out yet. Okay, so love the pomp and circumstance that Barn Pereira does. This is like a, a nice fine tissue paper, but there's a hint. Oh, oh, there's a hint of something in there. And of course, what this is, is your details. What do I mean by details? Well, you're going to find out. First of all, it is the cloth. And we are unraveling the cloth. And lest you think it's not 007. Now, I don't mind the cloth having 007 emblazoned across it because I think that's a nice little nod and you take it out, you, you wipe your sunglasses, you clean them off, and it's very subtle. You know, it's very light, but it also has a, a certain nod, a certain collector's mentality to it. Now, in this box right here is something very special. I have gone over these in my other reviews, and we're going to take a look at these right now. But this is very flat. I want to show how slim this is. And there is a reason that this is slim. You can literally put this into a jacket, you can put this into a pocket, you can put it into a purse, whatever you like, but this is actually your case. Look at the beautiful, the beautiful flocking on the inside. And again, watch this. I want to show you something. See the 007? You're like, ah, oh, 007 branding. It's too, it, 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 it's too overt. Watch. Closes over the flap. Disappears like Bond. You see where they went with that? Uh, inside, you've got nice little protective paper, but I want to show you the mechanism of action here because you're like, hold on a second, how does something flat fit these? What happens is, you see these sides? I love showing this. So you basically push these out and suddenly, <laughs> what the, yeah, you have sunglass cases. Okay, and the sunglasses actually go in there. It's a pyramid shape. Um, when you're at a cafe, what's great is you can lean, put it on the table. It's dimensional, it's not flat, so you won't forget it. That's a big deal because you don't wanna forget these. These are, uh, these are an investment. So, speaking of investment, the people over at Barton Pereira had to really think about what was their next step. You know, would they, would they do other kind of tweaks about the, the sunglasses that they had, or would they go in a different direction? To me, this is really taking inspiration from something that they knew worked. I mean, the Joes are arguably the most popular ones of their sunglasses, but let's get quotes directly from them, shall we? Following the success of Barton Pereira 007 collab collaboration, we were thrilled to bring our customers and Bond fans even more color choices in the classic yet evolving Joe style for our second installment with Eon Productions Limited ahead of the release of No Time to Die, said Bill Barton, co-founder and CEO of Barton Pereira. I often draw inspiration for our frames from unique places around the world, so it was a natural fit that the new colors of the collection were influenced by the various locations in the film, which exudes the elegance and flair James Bond is known for internationally, said Patty Pereira, co-founder and designer of Barton Pereira. Now, what I'm reading into that, and, and after people really having a great relationship with this, not just the brand, but the people of the brand, these are... And I want to tell you this, uh, Bill and Patty, they're Bond fans. They're Bond fans like you and I. I mean, so when they set out to make these four pieces and find inspiration behind them, give us different colorways and different hues according to the locations, but still connected to Bond and No Time to Die, they thought about it from a fan point of view. Many times you can even speak to and connect with Patty in the Barton Pereira stores. You'll, you'll find her in there connecting and rubbing elbows. She, she likes the relationships, which is fantastic. So here comes the hard part. Let's say you're considering one of these. Let's say you're considering all of these. All of these is the easy part. Which one though, if you were to pick one, is the hard part? I've got to tell you, after trying these on, I, 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 I'm thrown. I'm thrown because the ones that I thought I was going to gravitate to, I didn't. Now, I thought I was going to like the Matera ones, you know, the ones that I call wood grain, which isn't wood grain, it's a, it, but it is a gray stone tortoiseshell I love. I am digging these. I want to wear them out in the wild, get some reactions, and I'm going to do just that. However, the ones that really shocked the heck out of me, the ones that I said, these, I think, are going to be a signature piece of mine. 
they're the Port Antonio ones. They really are. They, they're different. They're light. To me, they scream of a bygone era, something very Fleming, Bond, Jamaica. To me, these captured the look and feel of those locations, environments better than any. And by the way, when I set out to do this video, I did not even think that I was going to pick a winner. But this is so personal. It's personalized. It's individual. It's, it's, it's like Bond. It's what you take into the room with you. So my suggestion is when you look to purchase one of these, really think about which ones are going to be connecting with you, not just from a look, not just from a feel and what it's made of, not just from the heritage of the brand, but which one's really going to be personally and emotionally connecting with you? Because these are investment pieces. An investment that usually runs anywhere from, well, the El Nido and Port Antonio ones are about 500 and the Hakadal and Matera sunglasses are $425. Each one of them, like I said, comes with that custom branded 007 sunglass case and the cleaning cloth. So there you have it. Right now, up on their website, are all of these different sunglasses. You can check them out. Really good images, really good pictures. But I hope, I hope this review and this discussion, I, I hope it helps. And by the way, if, if you don't get these sunglasses, at least you're getting to see what they are. You're getting to get to know the brand a little bit better. So there's no downside to this. If you are choosing one of these sunglasses, I'm hoping that the look and the style, the discussion, um, my first impressions up close and personal have helped as well. And I'm gonna keep these on because the sun's starting to come out and you know how we do this here. We're gonna keep talking about this and taking images of these out into the wild. But for now, I'll let you go. This has been David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Thanks to Barton Pereira for sending these and we will talk to you real soon. It's time, cheers. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.